Hey guys, welcome to the next instalment of Whiteboard Wednesday. We're up to week three and guess what? I'm still banging on about principal and interest and interest only. If you remember last week, I was talking about the difference in structures between interest only and principal and interest repayments and the benefit that could be associated with it with wealth creation. I'm gonna jump you over to an example. We'll recap what I've done previously and step you through what I'm um, banging on about. So, last week I talked about the difference between if you had your loan structured, your existing loan, and we'll call this your home loan, on an interest only repayment with a minimum commitment of 1875 compared to a principal and interest repayment of two and a half thousand bucks. What that could mean for your future borrowings. Now, a lot of lenders are out there, regardless of which structure you've got your loan repayment on, will assess you on a principal and interest type repayment. Right? So even if you've got an interest only repayment, they will still assess you on a principal and interest rate, on a principal and interest one. And regardless of which structure it is, they're always going to inflate the rate in which you're actually paying. So if it's four and a half in this example, it could be anywhere around about 7% that they're actually assessing at. At Finance Path, we use wholesale funders, right? And we sell those loans under our own banner. And the reason we've selected the wholesale funders is a number of different reasons, but one of the advantages at this point in time is that they actually will assess existing debt at interest only repayments as opposed to principal and interest. So what that means is in this scenario you could borrow up to $100,000 more by having your loan structured this way as opposed to that way. Cool. What I will preface that as saying is that doesn't mean that you should go and borrow 100 grand more. You should always work from the bottom up. And what I mean by that is work out exactly what you feel comfortable repaying not what any funder is going to give you, okay? So work from the bottom up, understand what you're comfortable with, and that's gonna be different for different people and borrow according to that. Um, but in this scenario, if you could borrow an extra 100 grand, what it means is you might be able to buy a property for 600 grand as opposed to one that's for 500 grand. Now the reality is a property difference of 100 grand here, that might just be associated with, that could be a two bed, two bath with a double garage, and this might be a two bed, one bath with no carport, with not even any uh, car parking. And the reality is in a similar suburb, this may be in a better street and this is an inferior street. So there doesn't have to be significant differences associated with these two properties um, to, to um, see that price difference. Now, it would also follow that if this joint's worth 600 grand and this one's worth 500 grand, it's probably because it's been in greater demand over the journey. And what I've got here is a capital growth rate of 6% on this property, as opposed to a capital growth rate of 5%. Now, it's not to say that just because it's always grown at a faster rate previously to get to that rate than this one, that it will do so moving forward. But unless there were some improvements, et cetera, done to this place, or there was some um, uh, infrastructure that was placed around this place that started to make it more desirable, we're gonna follow suit that it's performed one way previously and it was gonna continue to perform slightly better than that one. Now, if you went with this property as opposed to this property, 10 years later, have a guess how much extra this property would be worth. Even if you are guessing, I can't hear. 260 grand. Now, I can hear the smart ones down the other end of the camera saying, yeah, that's fine, Mark, but I've borrowed 100 grand more. You're right. And 100 grand more, let's use 5% as an interest rate, would set you back 50 grand. So if I deduct 50,000 bucks off that, guess what? I'm still 210 grand better. That's a significant difference to your end net wealth by just putting a certain structure in place. Now, again, I can't emphasize enough that for many of our clients, the discipline and, this, and, and also probably the, the, the desire to create some wealth through property for themselves isn't there. So this structure wouldn't be the best one for them. That would be. It's really important to understand what your relationship with money is and what your money personality type is. I encourage you, and not just yours, also your partners if you have one, I encourage you to jump onto our website. We've got this really cool little survey um, and report that we provide to our clients which tells you what your relationship with money is. So jump onto our website, download the, uh, complete the money personality profile on the website and we'll shoot you through a report that tells you your relationship with money. Thanks for joining us again. See you next week.